Good morning, everybody. This is Liz Showed, Registered Dietitian and Director of Clinical Nutrition at Jackson Purchase Medical Center, and we're doing another Learning with Liz lesson today. So last week I started talking about um, some different kind of vitamins. I think I went over vitamin D and what it's good for and for our body wise and where we get it. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the B vitamins. And you know what? There's a lot of B vitamins. There's a bunch of them. So I'm going to kind of go through them briefly. I've got a really, really good article that will attach to this. Um, it's kind of long, but it's really good because it goes through each different type of B vitamin and, and what it does for us, where we can get it with different foods and things such as that. So, you know, the B vitamins are really, really important. It is a water soluble vitamin. So if you take excessive amounts of, of the B vitamins, it's not gonna be quite as harmful to you as it would be doing a fat soluble vitamin. But it's very important that we have these B vitamins because they do a lot of good things for our body. So, um, and there's certain people that might need extra um, B vitamins, such as somebody who's pregnant, elderly, so with different types of disease status, um, statuses like with Crohn's disease and things like that. So I'll kind of go through that. And um, there's, like I said, there's a lot of them. So I'm gonna kind of go through the different ones. So the first one we're gonna talk about is vitamin B1, and that is thiamine is the other name that probably a lot of people would know that. And it plays a, in a very essential role in the metabolism of helping to convert nutrients into energy. So it's very important that we have um, thiamine. Um, the richest foods with vitamins are things such as pork, sunflower seeds, wheat germ. Well, actually, has has some B vitamins in there. Um, vitamin B2 um, or riboflavin is the, the actual name of that vitamin. It also helps to convert food into energy and also acts as an antioxidant. So that's a, something that's very, very important for our body. Foods that are highest in, in the riboflavin are things such as organ meats, beef, mushrooms. Those are really good with, with riboflavin. Um, vitamin B3 or niacin is the, the name of that. And it plays um, a really important role with, actually it gets down to the cellular, down to our cells. So it's very, very important um, that it helps with DNA production and, re and repair. Uh, food sources that we get niacin from include chicken, tuna, and also lentils, which is a type of beef. Vitamin B5, um, which is pantothenic acid, um, and again, it helps our body to obtain energy from our food, and it's also involved with different types of hormones and cholesterol production. So the foods that contain um, this vitamin B5 or pantothenic acid are things such as liver, fish, yogurt, and avocados are really, really good sources of that. Um, vitamin B6 is pyrodoxine is the name of that and it's involved in the metabolism of the amino acids amino acids is kind of like the proteins the building blocks of our body so um, it also helps for red blood cells to be um, produced and also helps with our neurotransmitters um, it's very important that we have those neurotransmitters because if you hit your hand really hard and you don't have those neurotransmitters you're not gonna feel it so it's important we have that so foods that are high in this are things such as chickpeas, salmon, and also potatoes. Vitamin B9 is folate, and folate is needed for cell growth, for amino acid metabolism, the formation of red and um, our white blood cells, and proper cell division. It can be found in foods such as leafy greens, liver, beans, or in a supplement um, in the form of folic acid. And you know, people who are pregnant, it's very important that they get their, their folate. It's very important because it helps um, the, the embryo to develop um, all of the different cells and things. Vitamin B12 is probably one of the most common ones that a lot of people probably know about, um, which is cobalamin, um, and it is very vital for our neurological function, DNA production, and red blood cell development. It's found naturally in animal sources like meats, eggs, seafood, and dairy. So if you notice, I keep saying that a lot of these things help with energy. Um, 
if somebody's feeling just really, really tired all the time, they may go to their doctor and the doctor says, well, let's see what your, your vitamin B levels are. And if they're low, then they say, oh, you need to take some, some uh, like a complex vitamin B. Um, and because that energy level is so low, because the, vitam the B vitamins help us with our energy. So it's very important um, that we have that, very, very. Um, as I said, you know, who's at risk if they don't get it, um, in particular, like I said, people who are pregnant, elderly, and then there are some different disease um, states um, that is very important that they get extra vitamin, vitamin B, such as celiac disease, cancer, Crohn's disease, um, alcoholism, hypothyroidism, and anorexia, because the body may not absorb the vitamin B like it's supposed to, or they don't get enough of it, and then that causes many, many other issues with that. So if someone has bariatric surgery, especially like gastric bypass surgery, with that type of surgery, um, they're bypassing part of the colon that where some of this is absorbed. So anyone who has had gastric bypass, it's very important that they take their B vitamins. Um, you know, if we can't get it all from food, um, it's very important um, that we might take a multivitamin that contains those, those complex um, B vitamins in there. So it, like I said, you, we really aren't gonna have too much of a problem with overdoing um, with the B vitamins, because like I said, it's a water-soluble vitamin. If you do take too much of it, you're probably just gonna urinate the rest of it out. But it's very important to make sure that we get enough of that. So how much should we have? Well, in this article, it's, it's gonna give us how much that it's that we need so I'm not going to go through that you can read that um, but if you take a like it's just a multi vitamin it's going to have most of those in there or you can take a B complex and that's going to help with that too but some other things that B vitamins might do which I thought was very interesting besides the energy wise it it's also it may reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression so I thought that was pretty good with some different studies are showing that it actually can help with that and then like I said it also can help to um, with giving us our energy it may relieve stress boost cognitive um, performance and then may help to reduce like I said the symptoms of depression and anxiety so hey that just might be an idea of, of another reason why we need to make sure and either eat those foods that have the B complex vitamins in it or if we need to take a multivitamin you know I don't want everybody always always just go take a pill but if somebody doesn't eat very well then they might need to do that but just try to eat as healthy as you can so we can get in those minerals and vitamins that our body needs every single day for it to function like it's supposed to so I hope you learned a little bit about B vitamins today if you have any questions please just drop us a line on here um, and as I said we'll attach um, this article to this because it's a really really good article um, about that and if you have any questions or any topics you would like for us to discuss just kind of drop us a line so thanks and have a great day